Good morning, I'm Chelsea Bard and I'm keeping an eye on storm damages for you guys this morning. We've received reports of trees down on wires in Harpswell. And there's a report of a transformer down in Old Orchard Beach. And there's another transformer down in Wyndham taken out by a tree near Anderson Road. Here's a look at a tree down in Tuttle, on Tuttle Road in Cumberland. Route 4 in the area of the Outlook Golf Course is down is uh, closed due to downed wire, wires and a section of Route 1 in Saco is closed right now near the Scarborough line due to a utility pole and wires down in the road as we've reported. Please make sure to give yourself enough time as you get out the door this morning to get to where you're going. Make sure to keep an eye out for debris, trees, pockets of water in the roadway, things like that. We're going to have more storm com coverage coming up and the next half hour starts right now. My goodness, it's music to your ears, or maybe not. It's you know the music, but it's only October. Yep. But we are absolutely in storm center mode right now. Yes. So many schools delayed, canceled. Uh, we have all kinds of cancellations posted on our website. More than 50,000 people throughout the state without power right now, and it's just going to get worse, as we think. I mean, this is as the storm continues to rage on. Uh, it's slamming the state with wind and rain, but we have team coverage for you this morning. Uh, we have Mike Slifer who's out there. Uh, we have Zach Blanchard who's out there, Sean Stackhouse all out there to bring you uh, your forecast today. But Todd Gutner's in-house, yeah. and he's got to look first at what you can expect as you head out the door this morning. Yeah, Jess Lee, it's a rare non-snow or ice storm center event. Um, and it's intense. Check this out. Hey, now Portland just gusted to 62 miles per hour. Low level jet nailing the coastline and that wind is starting to work up the coast. We're getting into the 40s here with Scasset Rockland Bar Harbor and tapering off, believe it or not, to the 40s, Sanford, Portsmouth and beyond. So the worst of it's right here over Casco Bay, and it's going to slowly go like this up the coastline over the next few hours, getting to Bangor by the end of uh, looks like the end of the show here at about 7 a.m. So uh, just getting worse the farther east you are. Not only do we have heavy winds, but we also have heavy rain. It's like a fire hose coming in off of the Gulf of Maine right now. Downpours in and around the greater Portland area. Exceptionally heavy rain up 295 to the split in Gardner, up the turnpike through Lewiston, Auburn, and then up into Augusta. Look at this rain, these oranges and reds. We have had some lightning too, and that's aided some of that wind that's screaming thousands of feet above our heads 
to get down to the surface. Convection can do that. We look at the radar, radar in eastern Maine, Penobscot Bay getting drenched, steady rains all the way out through Washington County, and it looks like heavy rain is about a half an hour away, moving up the river into the Bangor area. These next few hours, yes, it's the most intense part of the storm, but it's going to abruptly quiet down. By 9 a.m., the heavy rain is gone from southern Maine, so is the wind. It's nailing eastern Maine, including Bangor and Brewer and Ellsworth and Bar Harbor. But shortly after 9, it moves north of there, and then it nails northern Maine. And look at this, nothing really going on during the middle of the day. The storm itself will swirl right overhead this afternoon, and that will induce a few more scattered showers later on this afternoon. But by and large, the worst of it is these next three hours. If we can get through this, we'll be in much better shape. But already some damage out there and lots and lots of power outages. So the damage has been done. Nasty this morning, wind and rain. Better by the middle of the day with scattered showers and scattered showers. A little breezy this evening, but nothing like this morning. And we'll see temperatures holding in the 50s. Sean Stackhouse is live in eastern Maine this morning where we're waiting for the worst of it and it's starting to get bad already. Hey, Sean. Hey, Todd, thank you. Yeah, it is just starting to get worse here. The rain really picking up the wind, too. I was just chatting with Judy Long here from Ameramaine about how we almost lost both of our hats. So we're talking about outages this morning. Central Maine Power CMP further south in the state. They're seeing about 70,000 outages. We'll be bringing you updates all morning, but we're joined now with Judy Long of Ameramaine. Judy, how are outages looking in your coverage territory? Good morning. So we have about... 3,000 outages, mostly in Hancock County at this time, particularly in the communities of Hancock and Blue Hill. So you have a depot that's down that way. Is it a really busy morning for crews as they try to restore power, or are they still expecting more? So we've been gearing up for this for several days, our storm team looking at the forecast and making updates as appropriate. And we knew that the coast would be hit probably the hardest and first. And so we've got a lot of crews out in the Lemoyne area from that depot. And we're expecting that other crews as the storm moves north and east um, will continue to be brought in. So you have a, a depot here in Hamden as well for this part of the state. Is it really just the waiting game for when some of these tree crews and line crews have to go out? So there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes in terms of not only the line crews, but bringing in extra customer contact center employees and all the people that ensure that dispatching and all the support services are there for the line crews that are out there working. All right. Well, we thank Judy so much for joining us again. It's just over 3,000 of the Mara Maine that are without power. Central Maine Power, about 70,000 outages. We'll bring you those updates. And we'll also be hearing from a Central Maine Power spokesperson coming up at 6 o'clock. And we'll be rejoined by Judy up at 630. But for now, I'll send things back to you, Lee and Jess. Uh, we're actually going to send things out to, to Zach Blanchard, who is out in this right now with uh, more updates in go. southern Maine. Good morning, Zach. I know you're driving around in sunny right now or stormy. Excuse me. Yeah, definitely not sunny. No, stormy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, good morning, Jess and Lee. Yeah, it is definitely not sunny. It is stormy. Um, and as we've been out here in stormy, kind of traveling around, we've been to the Cape Elizabeth area that's seeing a lot of damage right now. We've also been to Scarborough where we are now. I'll give you a live look at the roads here. Uh, really everywhere you go, no matter where you are in the state that's experiencing these high winds and heavy rains, you'll see leaves across the roadways. Uh, the wind has definitely died down here in the last 15 minutes, but that doesn't mean there aren't still strong gusts. So if you're driving kind of a, a vehicle that might be more top heavy, like a large SUV or an RV or driving a, a tractor trailer truck today, obviously uh, it's going to be really difficult to maneuver on the roadways as those whipping winds just kind of come straight across the road. Uh, right now, uh, we do want to update you. We were uh, just in the last half hour on Route 1 in the Scarborough at the Saco line. They have reopened the road there. It was closed for pretty good amount of time this morning due to some down lines in that area. And we're also hearing reports of several other road closures um, across the state that will try to keep you updated both on air and online. But uh, no matter where you are, as you're heading out, you're definitely going to want to leave some extra time and just be aware uh, that there's debris in the roadways uh, and it could take you some extra time to get to work this morning. But for now, Lee and Jess, I'll send it back to you.
All right, thank you so much, Zach. We just want to update you on outages. Uh, we have the latest numbers from CMP, a uh, little more than 70,000 people out of power and Amera, Maine, uh, 3,500 people out of power right now. And those numbers keep climbing as the morning goes on and as well, the wind keeps coming. And as pounding. Todd mentioned, the storm is now yeah. headed towards eastern Maine, so mm -hmm. those Amera numbers are likely to climb as well as the thick of the storm heads in that direction. Also, just in South Portland, schools have decided to delay for two hours. They will update at 8 o'clock because they might cancel for the day, but at the very least, a two hour delay. And as you can see, if you are south of Augusta now, you can see at the bottom of your screen, um, there's a crawl with all the delays and closings right there. So you'll see all the latest on your school and your children and whether you have to leave the house or not. All right, we're going to get to some other news now this morning. And the Combat Sports Authority of Maine says in no way does it condone racism of any kind. Yeah, that's in response to a call for the resignation of its chairman. The nation's largest Muslim civil rights organization wants Hal Pierce, who oversees boxing and MMA fighting, to step down over what the group is calling his anti-Muslim Facebook posts. The Council on American Islamic Relations says a private citizen is allowed to have bigoted views, but someone in a position of authority should should not be allowed to express such thoughts. And anyone who holds such extremist, bigoted views obviously couldn't be unbiased in what they're doing in their position. He's a good guy. I've never heard him say anything uh, derogatory about anybody in or any racial type comment. Never. Russo added that last year, Hal Pierce donated money to the Portland Boxing Club for immigrant children who couldn't afford gear. We're told that the governor's office, which handles all board appointments and removals, is aware of the situation and is looking into it. Well, we are very happy to tell you we have some good news to report about Larry Lord. He is the civilian injured in the propane gas explosion in Farmington about a month ago. Lord has been in critical condition for almost his entire stay at Mass General in Boston. He's been there since the day of the blast. The hospital now says Lord's condition has been upgraded to serious. Lord got everyone out of the Leap Incorporated building that morning after he smelled gas. The blast killed Farmington Fire Captain Michael Bell, also severely injuring in the, ex in the explosion for other firefighters, including Bell's brother, Fire Chief Terry Bell. They have all been released, although Captain Scott Baxter is now at a rehab facility. Oh, I am here. Good morning. <laughs> I thought I was on the other camera. Good morning, everybody. All right, he'll take a quick look at the school bell forecast. But with that said, there are a lot of cancellations and delays. You can see them scrolling at the bottom of the screen right there. You can get the updated fresh list on our website, newcentermain.com, or on our mobile app too. If kids are off to school, it might be best to keep them inside the house as long as possible. It's a little dangerous outside right now. There are limbs coming down, there are trees coming down, wires coming down too. It will get much better midday and afternoon as the storm center swirls overhead and then moves away. So hang in there, but these next few hours are going to be intense. Storm details coming up. Stay with us on the Storm Center Morning.
Uh, it is uh, stumper time. Before we get to it, though, we just want to update you. Uh, you've been talking about, we've been talking about the ticker at the bottom of the screen. We can see all the latest closings and delays, but there's one that hasn't made it there yet. Yeah, that's Scarborough Schools because the person who actually went to submit it doesn't have power, uh, which is, you know, really difficult for people to send things in when they don't. But uh, if you got your phone, find a way to contact us. We actually have a team here working on keeping that crawl on the bottom of your screen updated. We also have things posted on our website. Uh, there's a story right on the hero right when you get to the website you should be able to see all the latest cancellations and outages. So even though you don't see it right now, if you're just waking up Scarborough, you do not go to school today. Yes. So there you go. All right, summer time, uh, and it's shocking. It's dealing with storms today, uh, <laughs> but not a rainstorm or a windstorm. We're talking hail. So uh, here's a question. All right, which of the following is about the same size as the largest hailstone ever recorded? A lemon, a grapefruit, a honeydew, or a Hail and watermelon. fruit go hand in hand, I guess. Well, there you go. We're going to have the answer for you coming up. We're live right now in South Portland <laughs> talking about wind and rain. We've got continuing coverage coming up right after the break. Kind of standing here uh, in awe of the numbers that keep coming in, the power outages, the to? wind gusts. More than 75, 75 right about 75 man. for the whole yeah. state. Yeah. So. And those, those eastern Maine <clears throat> Well, that's the thing. We haven't gotten to eastern to Maine come. yet. Yeah. 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 So. I mean, we only have a few thousand over there right now. Most of the, the outages are in southern Maine where we've been getting buffeted for a while, but we're about to get buffeted in eastern Maine for the next like two, three hours. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're probably going to get up. I would guess we're going to get up over 100,000 when it's all said and done. Right. So a major, a major outage event. You know, we seem to get these once a year at least now. And October um, seems to be yeah. our lucky month. Well, you know, it's because, I mean, we talked about it. When the leaves are still on the trees, you, you've got, you've got a, an added variable that you don't have in the wintertime. And the other thing is, you know, this, this isn't a true nor'easter. We're not seeing these winds go right over the coastline, which would create a little friction. These are due east, if not a slightly southeast component. So they're coming in uninhibited right off the water, and we just gusted to 62 miles an hour in Portland. Um, one of the buoys that's out in the Isle of Shoals, uh, which is about nine miles off of Kittery Point, just had a wind gust to 81 miles per hour. 
Um, that's scary stuff. That's where the winds are more southerly, a southeasterly component where we got into the warm sector. Hopefully that does not make it inland. Um, I don't think it will. I think we'll stop in the 60s, but boy, we've had some biggies. Georgetown gusted to 67. Cape Elizabeth out near two lights, 65. Half the town doesn't have power in Cape Elizabeth. Portland, 58. Actually, 62. I got to update that. I just showed you. York in Arundel in the mid 50s. Now we're starting to see the winds ramp up in eastern Maine. Bar Harbor, 44. Bangor 31, Eastport 38, Penobscot, Blue Hill. So these next few hours, while it is intense, it'll start to shift north and we'll get relief and these winds will kind of ratchet down. So through 7 o'clock, we're still getting buffeted in the greater Portland area. Lewiston, Augusta, the foothills, not as bad, but still very windy, capable of an outage. But our attention is going to start shifting to the mid coast, Penobscot Bay, down east Maine, including Bangor after seven o'clock and then up through nine o'clock just getting nailed in the Queen City area. Herman, Bangor, Brewer, Ellsworth getting nailed and look how much less wind we'll be dealing with after say seven, eight o'clock across the south. And then it shuts down in Bangor and the attention shifts to northern Maine and then it shuts down in northern Maine by the middle of the afternoon and we get into this wind hole. It's almost like the storm itself, the center will be swirling right overhead, kind of like a hurricane. In the center of a hurricane, it's calm, but on either side of it, it's crazy. Well, the back side will get some wind later tonight and tomorrow, but not as crazy as the front side. So again, it's a quick hitter, it's intense, but it's only gonna last a couple of more hours, and then we're gonna get some serious relief from the wind. As far as the rain goes, we are just getting inundated with it. It's compounding the problems here. Heavy rainfall falling out ahead of this storm, but that too will be moving on. But it's going to be a tough morning commute here with ponding on roads, street flooding. Um, some roads are completely closed off because of the tree limbs that are on them and the power lines that are on those. And if, if a road is not closed, you still have to deal with you know leaves that are littered all over it. In some cases, you can't even see the pavement. So please be super careful driving around this morning. The heavy rain shifts north. And again, just like the wind, the rain shuts down. And while the afternoon, there'll be a few scattered showers around, there won't be many and things will be much better as we get through the second half of the day. We'll start clearing out tonight and get back into a little bit of sunshine tomorrow, but we're still sort of under the influence of this powerful low as it moves through the Maritimes. It's not until Saturday when we get back into that dry and pleasant pattern, which looks like it'll hold through the entire weekend. Our weekend looks really nice with lots of sunshine. Marine forecast storm warnings are up. We've got seas that are crazy up around 15 feet on all the buoys. The winds are gusting over 50 knots out there too. Boy, it's ugly. All right, so here's the seven day forecast. Really bad this morning. It does improve a little bit this afternoon. Tomorrow's partly sunny, breezy mid 50s. Weekend beautiful, sunny near 60 degrees both day. Monday's fine too. And then our eyes will be watching in the middle of next week. And this one storm a week pattern looks like it'll hold again. And that one storm that we get is usually an intense one, and that one has potential as well for more big rain and big, big wind. So we're stuck in it for now. Yep. Um, hopefully everybody stays safe these next few hours, and we'll get the power restored back in a timely manner. Thankfully, it's not frigid behind the storm. As mm -hmm. you can see, temperatures are reasonable. If you can stay home, do it too, because just our drive in mm. leaves everywhere. And I mean, sure. and limbs on the roads. Yeah. I don't have to drive that far, but there were already things yeah, that you're swerving and place. avoiding. Yeah. yeah. We've been talking about how at the bottom of your screen, if you were in southern Maine, you were going to be able to see today's cancellations and closings because there hadn't been any north of Augusta yet. Mm. Well, now there are. So now wherever you are watching, us, everybody is seeing that. Oh yeah, with gas, yeah. two hour delay right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the latest, just keep keep checking on that. All right, uh, separate question for you today. It is storm related because, well, we're in the middle of a storm. Which of the following is about the same size as the largest hailstone ever recorded? And it's fruity. Lemon, grapefruit, <laughs> honeydew, or a watermelon? Hmm. Largest hailstone I'm going to go ever. grapefruit just because I like grapefruit. <laughs> I love grapefruit. I do, too. I love honeydew, too. Do you? I do love the honeydew. No. Love, so many people dislike it's a honeydew. Bland. It's bland. I don't so like cantaloupe, either. Okay. No, when it's oh, ripe, it's unbelievable. Cantaloupe. Okay, maybe anyway, I haven't had a good I think it's honeydew. eight inches, and, I, you know, is that a honeydew? I think Would that's that a honeydew. A, yeah, all right, we'll go with that. I'm going to, really? I'm going to. 
Watermelons are bigger I'm than mayonnaise. Gonna say Todd honey. is we're, right. We're not going to wait should. for your answer. No. <laughs> I'm saying honeydew. Todd should get this one right. I should. Right? Yes. Exactly. I should not uh, fail on a weather question. The hailstone fell during a storm in South Dakota in 2010, and the man who found it was planning to use it to make daiquiris with it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, but he changed his mind and gave it to the National Weather Service uh, instead. Cool. Donate to science. Good of him. How nice. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. All right. We're going to get back to this storm now, uh, which is definitely producing some dangerous wind gusts that we've been talking about all morning. Yeah. Right? I want to make sure we put some weights on Mike's. Life we need to weigh down with yeah. sandbags. Sure doesn't blow away. Seriously. So he, he's out of bug light. Hey, Mike. Hey, guys. You guys are right. I, I do need some of those sandbags. I mean, I've been bracing myself against these winds, and I've noticed that the sustained winds aren't quite as intense, but it's those gusts that really make all the difference here with this setup. I can only imagine what the people on the cruise ship behind me are feeling. I mean, that thing's got to be rocking. The waves have been super impressive. And as we keep the wind around, we don't really improve much until we get a little later into the morning. I did have an anemometer out here with me. I actually dropped it and had to chase it down, so I decided to leave it in the van for now. And the highest gust that I recorded with that was 48 miles an hour. But obviously, some of the other anemometers around Maine have reported much more impressive numbers. And I think that those are a little more true to what some people are experiencing. But uh, again, it's really the gusts that we are dealing with this morning that are causing a lot of those issues. Thankfully here, I haven't seen too much in the way of downed trees, but on my way into work, there were a few limbs on the roadways as well as some garbage cans that had been blown around. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. Also want to mention that with all of the leaves on the roadways, those wet leaves can be just as slick as ice. Take it slow. High profile vehicles are going to feel the effects of this wind quite a bit as we get a little bit later into the morning. I mean, even on our ride here in the uh, live van that we have, you can feel that wind just rocking the vehicle back and forth. So anything that's high profile, vans, SUVs, tractor trailer trucks especially, will be feeling the effects of those wind gusts through the morning. And again, these are expected to continue for quite some time. When we started off this morning, we could see on the reflecting off of the clouds some of the uh, transformers and things like that that had been blowing as the power lines came down. So that's what we're dealing with out here. The good news is right here in South Portland, the rain has actually started to let up a little bit. So minor improvements, Jess Lee, um, thank you for those minor improvements. <laughs> But uh, we've still got plenty of wind. Yeah, well, just as he says it, a gust goes right through. All right, exactly. Mike, thank you very much. So Chelsea Bard is here now and has been keeping an eye on things for us with what's going on outside. Good morning, everyone. Whether it's by road, by boat, by air, we're taking a look at how the storm is affecting your travels this morning, and we're going to take a look at that when we come back.
Good morning, I'm Chelsea Bard keeping an eye on storm reports posted online this morning. Amtrak Down Easter Train is announcing they're expecting to have significant service disruptions and delays due to downed trees across tracks, power outages throughout southern Maine and New Hampshire. There doesn't seem to be any significant changes to flights both arriving and departing from the Portland Jetport and Bangor Airport. But keep an eye on your flights, keep an eye on your, uh, the status of your trips for this morning. For updates, you can find cancellations, delays, weather alerts, all on our mobile app, so make sure to download that. And still a lot more to come this morning as our Storm Center coverage continues. I'm New Center Main Zach Lantern live in Stormy. We're taking a look at the roads. Here's a live look in Falmouth right now. It's going to make a messy morning commute for you, even though it's rain because this wind has put debris all over the roadways. We'll have everything you need to know coming up. Well, we've been tracking the storm in Maine, obviously, all morning, but we want to give you a look at some unbelievable conditions in the south. This happened overnight. Yeah, New Jersey, New York, and Philadelphia have also been hammered by rainfall and wind. One New Jersey man splashed himself around on a floaty on the overflowing road. Yeah, up here we're dealing with a lot of storm conditions. We're going to have a lot more on that coming up on the morning report. That's right. Our next half hour begins right now. A powerful autumn storm lashing us with wind and rain. We're in storm center mode and we have team coverage. Plus the winds and rain are making a mess of your morning commute. We'll have the latest on the road closures throughout the state. A whole lot of people are waking up without power this morning, everyone. Here's a look at the latest numbers from Amera and CMPs. You see over 80,000 people so far. That number continues to climb as we are getting hammered with major winds and rain on this Thursday morning. And take a look at this earlier during a live shot from South Portland with meteorologist Mike Slifer. You're going to see a transformer explode during the live shot behind him. A lot of reports of fires and downed wires are coming in as the morning goes on. 
So please beware as you head outside. It is pretty dangerous out there in a lot of parts of the state. We've got school closings. We've got delays. We've got a lot going on. In fact, we've got all kinds of coverage, quadruple coverage, if you will, coming your way as you see somebody in each of those boxes. And we're going to get right to Chief Meteorologist Todd Gutner, who's got the latest of our current conditions. Hey, Todd. Yeah, good morning, Jess. Good morning, Lee. Folks at home. Uh, this is intense. It's only going to last a few hours, but boy, is it intense. These winds that are lashing the coastline right now have been gusting into the 60s. Current wind gusts right here in the 40s, but every once in a while it ramps up above 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour, and that's why we have tens of thousands of outages over southern Maine. The low level jet, which is producing these really strong wind gusts is right here, but it's starting to translate up the coastline. So eastern Maine, where you're gusting in the 30s in Bar Harbor and Bangor, very shortly you're going to see gusts in the 40s, 50s, and perhaps even 60 miles per hour along the coast. So I expect power outages to start going up here across eastern Maine from the Amera Main zone. All right, here's the wind. All right, here's the rain. So we've got this two headed kind of monster for the first few hours. The heaviest of the rain is actually inland away from the coast where it's more showery right now. But as you get up to Augusta and Waterville and the Belgrade Lakes, absolutely pouring. We've had rain amounts eclipsing two inches through the Oxford Hills. We're seeing some really heavy rainfall right now, too. So it's not the wind which is going to cause you problems on the roads. It'll be the rain and it'll also be some tree limbs, some power lines that are down, road closures. And if those roads are open, you still have to deal with all those wet leaves. You're going to notice driving around that in some cases you can't even see the pavement because the leaves are completely covering it. Heavy rains are getting really close to Bangor now. They're moving up through Penobscot Bay. I'd say in about 30, 45 minutes, it'll start pouring even more than it is right now. Now, the good news is all of this shuts down so quickly. Like in two hours over southern Maine, it'll be a lot quieter. By about 10, 11 o'clock in Bangor, a lot quieter, and the attention shifts into northern Maine for the afternoon. But here, the storm will be weakening, which is good news. Not as many power outages in northern Maine. This afternoon, with the upper level energy swirling overhead, a scattered shower is possible, but will be much drier, much less rain expected after, again, these first few hours. When it is nasty out, so please be careful. Maybe delay the start of your day if you can. Better by midday, scattered showers, breezy this afternoon, temps right around 50 degrees. All right, we're going to cover this storm both inside where I am and now outside with Zach Blanchard. He's live with Stormy. Looks like you got a road closure there. I think you're in Falmouth. Is that right, Zach? Where are you at? Yeah, Todd, that's right. We're here on Allen Ave in Falmouth where you can see this road is closed behind me and there is a downed tree, a tree branch uh, rather right there. Uh, and we're hearing of these reports all across this area down into southern Maine. And as we've been traveling in stormy this morning, the roads have just been really bad in terms of being covered with debris and leaves as well as just trash cans everywhere. And if you take a closer look, um, you can actually see some video from stormy right now. Um, the roads, there's just the wind whipping, the rain whipping. We even saw some buses kind of pull off to the side because when you're those larger vehicles, whether you're a bus, an RV or a trash or trailer, uh, the wind kind of can make you go all over the roadways. So if you're driving any of those this morning, uh, you definitely want to keep that in mind. And if we take um, a closer look here at the roadway now, what Todd's been talking about is just this leaf, cover leaf coverage um, all across the road. Uh, and this is really just as bad as ice and snow in many ways. When you hit it and you have to slam on your brakes, you will skid. So uh, as you're heading out, as this rain keeps coming down and the wind has completely ripped all of these leaves off the trees, keep that in mind to just leave some extra time. Lee and Jess. All right, Zach, thank you very much. So wind is blowing down lines, knocking out power for so many people in Maine this morning. Catherine Hartner from CMP is kind enough to come in and join us this morning. How are the crews doing? First and foremost, there's a lot to keep up with as these numbers continue to grow. Well, given the conditions, Lee, obviously safety is our number one concern this morning. There are uh, branches in the road. There are a lot of leaves in the road. There are more people getting out onto the roads, and we need to make sure that our crews are safe. They've been out uh, for a couple of hours now. They've been uh, in very early uh, and assessing the situation and deciding where to start. We've had some people send us messages just saying that they're having some issues technologically getting their outages reported. Are you hearing that? And if so, how are we dealing with that? Yeah, I think uh, volume is probably the issue here. People get up in the morning, they want to report. We have the outage page. If we ask people to be patient. We will certainly be sure to address any technical issues that are happening. 
Any trouble spots in our state right now that seem to be more serious than others? Yeah, Cumberland and York counties are where mo uh, more than half of those outages are. In fact, the majority of them are there. It's a coastal event, and that is where we're seeing most of the impact right now. All right, Catherine, it's going to be a long couple of days for you guys and your entire crew, so thank you for coming in, and thank your crews for all the work that they do to help us get our power back if we have lost it. Thanks. Thank you. Checking in on some news now, here's your morning rush in 90 seconds or less. This storm is affecting boaters and ships out at sea. Some of the cruise ships scheduled to be in port today are staying at sea or they're shifting their timetables. The Ada Vida made an unscheduled stop in Portland yesterday ahead of the storm and the mine skiff arrived in Maine a day early to wait out the nor'easter. A man charged in connection with his one-year-old daughter's death is back in jail because of a bail violation. Shane Smith was charged with endangering the welfare of a child after his daughter died from ingesting fentanyl last year. Smith says the girl's mother, Kimberly, Kimberly Nelligan, rubbed heroin on the toddler's gums to help her sleep. She claims he's the one who did that. Smith had been released on bail but was arrested on Monday on drug charges. A meeting at the White House turns into a he said, she said between President Trump and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Go ahead, we stand witnessed on the down. part of the yep. president was yep. a meltdown. Democrats were at the White House to talk about the president's decision to pull troops out of Syria. Members of both parties voted to condemn that decision just before the meeting. Democrats say the president insulted Pelosi in the meeting. They say he, quote, had a meltdown. The president tweeted that it was Pelosi who had an unhinged meltdown. We now know when Maine astronaut Jessica Meir will make her first spacewalk. NASA says Meir and fellow astronaut Christina Koch will make the first historic first all-female spacewalk tomorrow morning just before 8 when they leave the airlock at the International Space Station. Jessica Meir grew up in Car Caribou, Maine. She says she's dreamed of the spacewalk since she was a child. And that is your morning rush. For more on these stories, head to our website or check out our mobile app. 608 on this Thursday, a main town leader has resigned after she's caught on camera allegedly slapping a town employee. We'll get some details on that story next. But first, Todd, I feel like I'm going to be able to guess the one thing I've got to know about today's weather. I mean, it's been about the wind from the get-go, so let's just talk about it. All right, right now the gusts are strongest from Casco Bay on up through the mid-coast into Penobscot Bay moving east so down east maine you're going to get yours in a little bit but we're gusting over 40 miles per hour and at times over 60 miles per hour so the wind impact is highest right now and will be for the next few hours but then it goes way down for the afternoon and things will quiet down and get better so hang in there we'll break down more of the storm for you coming up on this storm center morning so stay with us and even our Pulse Poll is storm related today. We want to know when it comes to a big storm, would you rather deal with the wind and the rain or the snow and the ice? You can weigh in at pulse.newcentermain.com. Click on the Pulse tab of our mobile app. And so far, overwhelmingly, wind and rain is in the lead. Well, you're in luck. We're getting plenty of it.
In the headlines, a town leader in Buxton has resigned after she was caught on camera allegedly assaulting a town employee. Jean Harmon, a chairwoman on the Board of Selectmen, of, uh, was charged with assault, but a mistrial was declared on that charge back in July. So the video that you're about to see here appears to show Harmon slapping the town's solid waste department manager, Greg Heffernan. During an argument last year is when this happened. Now, after the mistrial, Harmon pleaded to disorderly conduct. Buxton's charter, though, requires any selectman convicted of a crime to forfeit the office. So, yesterday, Jean Harmon resigned. Last night, the board voted and accepted her resignation. Talking about wind and rain here in South Portland, we will have continuing coverage coming up in just a few. Man, Mike just getting pounded out there in South Portland. Thanks for hanging in, Mike, and thanks for hanging in and watching us this morning, whether it's on TV or if you don't have power, it's on a mobile app or on your phone or wherever. Um, it's going to be pretty nasty. A lot of schools have delays or cancellations because of the lack of power. Kids off to school this morning, gear up. Probably keep them inside as long as you can where it's safest. The afternoon much better and easier getting kids home from school as we'll start cleanup process by then. All right, more on the storm. It's coming up. Stay with us. Welcome back as this storm rages on all over the state. We have some updated power outage numbers for you. Uh, CMP customers, uh, 86,000, just over 86,000 now out of power. And uh, for the Amera coverage area, just over 6,000. And we yeah. think that might get a little worse. Oh, it definitely Yeah, because it's headed that way. And we right. talk about these wind gusts that are, you know, roughly 60-ish miles an hour, you know, when they, when they come. Yeah. And then you think about those, like, Category 5 hurricanes. Yeah. That are 156-mile-an-hour winds. Yeah. I mean, right now, this is like, oh, my goodness. Well, it's the difference I mean, between knocking down houses or heavy damage to right. houses and just having power outages sure. because right. trees snapping that kind but of thing. But this is scary to me. Shift. And, no, and this, not to diminish what yeah. we're going through. No, but right. it does I'm put like, it in oh pers gosh. perspective. Right. Yeah. I can't even imagine. And a little more perspective here. It could be worse <laughs> with this particular storm. Down on Cape Cod, Provincetown at the tip of Cape Cod, 
earlier this morning gusted to 90 miles wow. per hour. 90. In Portland, the highest That's has been insane. 62 so right now. So far, 62. Yeah. yeah, and I think the peak so far is like 97 or 8. Wow. And that was out in Georgetown on the mid coast. So. Um, it, it's bad, and I don't want to, you know, sugarcoat this in any way, shape, or form, or diminish it in any way, shape, or form, but it could be and could have been a lot worse if we got into the warm sector, and we might have in some of the peninsulas or some of the islands that kind of jut out. We'll have to evaluate after to see if we had any 70-plus mile-an-hour gusts. All right, now, at the moment, the gusts are buffeting Casco Bay, mid-coast, up to Penobscot Bay. So, you know, it's roughly 40 to 50 miles wide, this low-level jet. So it only lasts a few hours, but those few hours are so intense, just hitting up against the house and kind of making it shake. I mean, we can hear it countless times up above our heads here on the roof uh, at the station. So it's scary, and it's caused a lot of damage, and it's going to continue to do so. But it's almost over in southern Maine. I mean, Sanford's not gusting very high, and Portsmouth isn't gusting at all right now. So it's going to quiet down in just a matter of, you know, another hour or two. There's the gust in Georgetown. That's the peak so far, 67. Cape Elizabeth out near two lights, 65. Portland's max is 62. Rockland, Arundel, 50s. And we're starting to see the gusts now move up in eastern Maine. And our attention and our concerns will shift from here in southern Maine to here in central and eastern Maine, where we could hit 60 plus along the down east coastline. So eight o'clock from now, look at this, it's over. The wind part of the storm is over in southern Maine, including the greater Portland area. Still gusty in Lewiston, Augusta, up through Bangor, Ellsworth, Bar Harbor. And then by nine o'clock, it's pretty much over in Lewiston. And then by 11 o'clock, it's over in Bangor. Look how much shuts down. You know, it's just so much better by the middle of the day. And we'll be concerned with folks in northern Maine. But the wind gusts up there and the part of the storm will not be as powerful. So I don't expect as many outages in northern Maine as we're getting along the down east coast and along the southern coast. This is kind of like a hurricane. You know, at the center of a hurricane, the eye, it's nice and calm in there. Well, the eye of this storm is going to swirl overhead this afternoon, and it's going to be kind of calm. It's going to be strangely calm. And then we get the backside wind, which won't be as strong as the front side wind, but it'll still be blustery later tonight and tomorrow. Getting a lot of rain, too. Um, you know, radar's picking up the yellows and oranges. We have amounts that are over two inches. Storm drains, tough time keeping up. So driving around is going to be really difficult early on. But that, too, will be stopping very shortly. We'll see the rain taper off. It already is down to showers along the coastline. And heavy rain up in the foothills will start to diminish, too. Rain shutting down in Bangor around lunchtime, but heavy rain up across our northern counties through the afternoon. We're not completely done with rain because as that storm center swirls overhead this afternoon, the upper level energy will induce some scattered showers, but there won't be many, and it's not going to be like it is out there right now. Now, we're still sort of under the influence of the storm tomorrow. A little better, a little sunshine, but still kind of blustery. We don't get the true sunshine and the true good stuff until the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, both look beautiful, bright and sunny with highs around 60 degrees. We're going to need it because we're going to have to do a lot of storm cleanup. Marine forecast, storm warnings up, seas 13 to 18 feet. Last week we had a similar wave event and surge event and, uh, you know, breakers along the coastline. And it caused a lot of problems for, marine, for mariners and for the fishing community. And this storm will do the same. Um, hopefully everyone got their boats out in time or they're seriously moored up and, uh, you know, are in good shape in a sheltered spot. But I bet there'll be some problems out there too with uh, some of the lobster lobstermen that couldn't get their gear out of the water. There's going to be cages up on the beaches and stuff like that. So, yeah. Oh, we've been talking a lot about the rain and the wind gusts, and we've got one guy who's been in the middle of all of it all yeah. morning. Yeah, yes. experiencing it. So Mike Slifer mm. is out in South Portland at Bug Light right now with the latest on the conditions out there. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Yeah, we've uh, dealt with quite a bit of wind and rain. I do want to mention something that Todd said in that the rain is not quite as heavy at the coastline, and that's something that I've noticed quite a bit here. We started off with super heavy rain, but Things are a little bit lighter now, and the waves have actually started to relax a little bit, and that's all thanks to the tide going out a bit, and our sustained winds aren't quite as impressive, but that's not to say that we still don't get some impressive gusts here. We have been uh, experiencing some 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts. That's what I've been measuring with the anemometer that I had. Again, I lost it. It blew out of my hand. I had to chase it down, so I'm just going to leave it in the van for a little while now, but still dealing with those impressive gusts, some limbs down, and I think that uh, we do make those improvements later on. We're going to send it back into the studio. 
All right, thank all right, you so Michael. much, Mike. Yeah, thank you very much. Hang on to that anemometer. That's <laughs> good advice. So, all right, Sean Stackhouse tracking some power outages for us this morning. Hey, Sean. Hey, good morning. Well, I'll leave the talk about wind strength to Mike, but I can tell you right now it's really starting to rain pretty hard here in the greater Bangor area. We're live in Hamden this morning and a quick update on outages. Central Maine Power reporting 92,000 outages. Ameramain reporting just over 7,000. We'll be bringing you updates through the rest of the morning on those numbers and coming up at 630. We'll hear from an Amara spokesperson about their response this morning. Good morning, I'm New Center Maine's Chelsea Bard, keeping an eye online for you guys on storm reports. Portland police are warning folks to be weary of outages affecting traffic lights this morning. They're encouraging folks to slow down, take your time, pay attention. The lights might not be working. For storm alerts and closings, check out our mobile app. All right, 624 on this stormy Thursday. So two things that tell you it's absolutely storm center. One, the music, obviously. Two, Don Kerrigan appears on the morning report. <laughs> yes, he does. And uh, this storm has been really the worst on the coast. And Don Kerrigan is at his mid-coast home this morning. What are the conditions like there, Don? Good morning, guys. Uh, yeah, conditions are as we've been talking about all morning. It is windy. I've got the window open just briefly so we can get a sense of what it is. The winds, these, these windows face due south. Winds are coming from kind of southeast over that way, as best I can tell. And uh, you hear it just roaring out there. We're out of power, running on generator right now. Uh, the power went out here around 3 a.m., as far as I can tell. A lot of power out here, 6,800 out here in Lincoln County, where we live, around 4,000 in Sagadahot County, that's in the Bath area. Fewer up in Knox County the last time we checked, but as we've heard the storm moving up that way, that could increase. Rockland Harbor Master told us three boats have, uh, have broken their moorings, washed ashore in the harbor up there. Uh, in Booth Bay, where we were yesterday, lots of power outages, trees and branches down, broken poles, says Emergency Management Director Scott Campbell, some roads closed. Uh, dispatchers in the three counties just too busy to talk to us. Uh, lots of wires down, lots of uh, lots of issues right now. We'll hope it gets better. Back to you guys. All right, anchoring a storm center and tossing Don Kerrigan. That's a bucket list item right there. So thank you very much, Don, for getting up early for us this morning. All right, obviously tricky commute for a lot of you this morning. Yeah.
Right, Zach Blanchard is on the roads in southern Maine with Stormy right now. What's it look like out there, Zach? Yeah, Jess, you're taking a live look from Stormy right now. Road closures just everywhere. This is Allen Road here in Falmouth. We're hearing of several trees down. Police and public works crews are out in full force this morning as the storm rages on. We'll have all the latest coming up. Hi right, guys, if you're flying out of Portland, Bangor today, or maybe planning to pick somebody up at the airport, obviously check your flight status. There could certainly be delays or cancellations. We're also hearing there will be significant delays with the Down Easter train service due to power outages and trees that have fallen across the tracks. They are asking you, the Down Easter people, to check their website to get all the latest travel information from them. So if you're going anywhere, make sure you check ahead and ensure that everything is still where you thought it was supposed to be. And the nor'easter is not just affecting our state of Maine. It's also hit our neighbors to the south yesterday and overnight. Some streets in New Jersey completely flooded out. Sections of New York and Philadelphia have also been hammered by rainfall. Nearly 4,000 people lost power in New Jersey during the storm. One Jersey man actually splashed himself around on a floaty uh, to, on the overflowing roads. We don't recommend that, uh, but powerful winds reach as high as 65 miles per hour down there. Uh, we've got lots more to talk about, lots more weather related things coming up in our next half hour of the morning report. And that next half hour begins right now. Wind and rain just hammering the coastline. We've got live coverage this morning in South Portland. Plus, we're here in Falmouth where road closures are happening in this area and all across the state. We'll tell you everything you need to know before you head out the door. Welcome back everyone. I'm Jessica Gagne. The winds are howling and the rain is falling hard over much of the state. We are right in the middle of our fall nor'easter. Yeah, our storm center team certainly has you covered all across the state. We're talking power outages, morning commute conditions, and right now, first and foremost, a look at the forecast. Chief Meteorologist Todd Gutner has that. Hey, T. Lee, thank you, Jess. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. A lot of power outages and it's all because of the wind. It's always been about the wind with this storm. 
lesser extent the rain. This wind is just buffeting our coastline right now and it's starting to penetrate inland too. We're getting some gusts in Augusta to 40 miles per hour, Bangor to 35 now. We've had numerous gusts to 60 miles per hour across southern Maine. It looks like we're almost out of the worst of it though in the greater Portland area. The low level jet and these insane gusts are starting to translate up the coast. There's Wiscasset just gusted to 55 miles per hour. So power outages will continue to come in. We also have some very heavy rain, especially inland up through the foothills and now into the mountains where we have some yellows and oranges around Farmington and around Skowhegan. Driving in this part of the storm with the heavy rain, bringing down leaves and wet roads and all that is not easy either. So please take it easy and be careful. Rain has almost shut down though, and it has so down in York County. Still pouring though up the coast. We have some heavy rain moving into the Queen City again. Looks like Ellsworth steady rainfall, Bar Harbor too. And it looks like it's flaring up a little bit as you work through interior Hancock and Washington County. Counties. Here's some good news in all this. While it's intense now, in a matter of like an hour, hour and a half, it's going to ramp down. We're going to lose the rain. We're going to lose the wind. We'll lose it in Bangor by about 11 o'clock. Then the attention shifts to northern Maine, but the storm will not be as strong in northern Maine as it is across the south. This afternoon, as the storm center swirls overhead, we'll get a couple of showers to pop up, but not many. Most of the rain over, and we'll start clearing out tonight. Nasty again this morning with wind and rain. Better by midday with scattered showers and additional scattered showers this evening. It'll be breezy out there, but not too bad. Not enough to give us any more power outages. I'll be back in a few minutes with much more, but first we're going outside. We have complete storm center coverage for you. Sean Stackhouse is in Hamden this morning. Good morning, Sean. Hey, good morning, Todd. It's a lot rainier here than it is where you are inside right now. It's really starting to pick up in Hamden around the greater Bangor area. And we're seeing a lot of outages that come with it. More than 100,000 across the state. More than 100,000 outages with just Central Maine power alone in Amera, Maine. Looking at right around 12,000. I'm joined with Amera, Maine spokesperson Judy Long this morning. Judy, what are we seeing so far in your coverage territory? So around 5 a.m. this morning, we started seeing some outages come in in Hancock County along the coast. And now we're starting to see more outages reported in Penobscot County as the storm moves north. So it's coming here. Where are we starting to see some of those outages? I know that we've seen some in Brewer, that Orrington area. So it's, it's looking like it's going to impact this greater Bangor region. So we've been anticipating that there would be impacts throughout our service territory in northern and eastern Maine. And as the storm moves north, um, we anticipate that there will be more outages in that area as well. But definitely Hancock County and central Penobscot County right now are seeing the biggest impacts. And we're seeing that impact right here. You've been standing out with me this morning, being so kind to give updates on conditions and stand in the rain. What advice do you have for folks as they're experiencing some of this weather? Well, it's still dark this morning, so be very mindful if you're traveling on the roadways with water pooling and the possibility of down lines. Definitely be watchful, and if you see any down lines, please stay away and call us here at Amera, Maine. Also advise you to make sure that your generators are operating according to manufacturer's instructions and that you give us a call if you experience an outage. All right, well, really important things to remind over 100,000 of you without power this morning. We'll keep you updated on our website and mobile app as those numbers increase and continue and hopefully are put away again soon and restored quickly. Judy, thank you so much for joining us. Lee and Jess, I'll send things back to you. All right, Sean, thank you very much for that. All right, we're going to get to some other news now that's not weather related this morning. The Combat Sports Authority of Maine says in no way does it condone racism of any kind. Yeah, that's in response to a call for the resignation of its chairman. The nation's largest Muslim civil rights organization wants Hal Pierce, who oversees boxing and MMA fighting, to step down over what the group is calling his anti-Muslim Facebook posts. The Council on American Islamic Relations says a private citizen is allowed to have bigoted views, but someone in a position of authority should not be allowed to express such thoughts. And anyone who holds such extremist, bigoted views obviously couldn't be unbiased in what they're doing in their position. He's a good guy. I've never heard him say anything uh, derogatory about anybody in, or any racial type comment. Never. Russo also added that last year, Hal Pierce donated money to the Portland Boxing Club for immigrant children who couldn't afford gear. We are told the governor's office, which handles all board appointments and removals, is aware of the situation and is looking into it. 
All right, 636 on this Thursday. We have some good news about one of the people hurt in that propane explosion in Farmington about a month ago. The details are coming up next, but first let's check in with the one thing you need to know about today's weather. It might be more than one thing today, Todd. Um, there are many things that I could deliver, but the biggest threat this morning is the wind, and the results are over 100,000 power outages, unfortunately. Um, the gusts are still heavy, and they're still coming at us. We've got gusts over 40 and even 50 miles per hour in sections of the coastline. Here's some good news, though. It is going to taper off and ratchet down very shortly. By noon, wind not much of a problem. This afternoon, it won't be a problem at all. So we can get through these next few hours. We'll be able to get out there and start doing some storm cleanup and restoring power across the area. Stay with us on the Storm Center morning. We have much more coming at you in a few minutes. And if you're at home checking out the conditions on your phone, weigh in on our Pulse Poll. We want to know when it comes to a big storm, would you rather deal with the wind and rain like today or the snow and ice? Well, 85% of you say wind and rain, and you're getting what you've asked for. This is, uh, we watch the weigh in, pulse.newcentermain.com, the Pulse tab of our mobile app, wind and rain over snow and ice every day of the week. So let's just get through this one. We'll be back right after this. Well, we are very happy to say this morning we have some good news to report about Larry Lord. Yeah, he's the LEAP employee who was hurt in the Farmington pro pass, propane gas explosions that took place nearly a month ago. Lord has been in critical condition for all of his stay at Mass General in Boston. That's where he's been since the day of the blast. But as of last night, the hospital says Lord's condition has been upgraded to serious. Lord got everyone out of the LEAP building the morning of the explosion after he smelled gas. The blast killed Farmington. Fire Captain Michael Bell. Four other firefighters were badly hurt, including Bell's brother, Fire Chief Terry Bell. All have been released from the hospital, although Captain Scott Baxter is now at a rehabilitation facility. Just a minor improvement so far here in South Portland, but still a lot of wind and rain to deal with. Live coverage coming up in just a bit. All right, we're going to take a look at the school bell forecast, but I got to tell you, there are a lot of delays and a lot of cancellations, too. You can get the latest on our mobile app. You can get it on our website, too, at newcentermain.com. Going to be nasty at the bus stop. Best to keep the kids inside as long as possible. It's safer that way. Afternoon, much easier getting kids home. We'll be able to clean up a little bit of the debris on the roads, get the wires out of there, too. We'll have some storm cleanup time ahead. But right now, it's bad. We've got all the details coming up.
Uh, this is a live look at Bar Harbor this morning as the storm moves up toward yeah, that area. Right. Uh, hitting it a little bit harder. I know the Southern worst Maine. is on the way Bar Harbor. You think it's bad now? Oh boy, it's coming. Yeah, yeah, we've been getting some pictures and videos from you guys as well safely. Thank you for that part. This is South Portland, just trees down on the road. This is kind of the scene everywhere. Yeah. Once the once the light starts to come up so that's on your thing. day, you're going to yeah. notice sure. what happened. The carnage, if you will, will really be visible yeah. uh, not too long from now when it gets a little more more daylight. Yeah, out you there, can't so. see much at the moment, but um, you know, we're going to be able to evaluate in, in about a half an hour once you know, we get some, some of that light and you know, throughout the morning, we're going to be in cleanup mode, trying to, you know, reopen these major arteries that are clogged up with limbs like that or a tree or worst case power lines, you know, but so at least it goes out fast. So it's not it's like we'll such a quick hitter, but yeah. boy, it's an intense shot. You know, it's like it's a punch to the nose, yeah. you know, not to the gut kind of thing. It's a Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One punch will take you out. Exactly. Yeah, so. Until later in his career when you know, yeah. he started biting people. But this has a bite to it, too. <laughs> anyway. Um, you know, nothing to joke about here. This is the low level jet. It's three hours long. It's insane producing gusts up and down the coastline over 60 miles per hour. I will say it could have been a lot worse. Not too far offshore of Seacoast, New Hampshire. There's a little like cluster of rocks called the Isle of Shoals and there's an observation unit out there and it measured a gust to 81 miles per hour. That was in the warm sector. Provincetown, Mass, Chatham, Wellfleet out on Cape Cod in the warm sector. P-Town gusted to 90 miles per hour. You know, we see, we're seeing all the damage from 60 plus. Imagine if we had a 90 mile per hour gust. So we we're trying to put it in perspective a little bit. It could have been a lot worse and it's bad. It's bad, but there you go. So we're almost out of the worst of it in Portland. Look at it. It's not even gusting anymore in Portsmouth or it's not as bad, but we're still hitting these every once in a while, 45 or so. Wiscasset last hour gusted over 55. Rockland Bar Harbor starting to gust now. Bangor, it's getting a little nasty in town. And again, that low level jet's moving north right up the coastline. So expect it to go downhill real quickly here in eastern and central Maine. Georgetown's the leader in the clubhouse, not the clubhouse you want to be in. Wind gusts to 67 miles per hour out near two lights in Cape Elizabeth, 65. Half the town doesn't have power there. Portland hit 62. That's on the top 10 list for uh, wind gusts in Portland since we've been keeping records. Eastern Maine starting to get ugly now. Bangor to 35, Eastport 40, Blue Hill Penobscot getting very windy as well. This low level jet will be moving up the coast and look at this, this is 8 a.m. It's done. The wind is over. The wind storm part of the event over in southern Maine. And then by 9, 10 o'clock, moving up through Lewiston, Auburn, and Augusta. And then 10, 11 o'clock through Bangor. So 11 o'clock, it shuts off. And then the attention shifts to northern Maine with a low level jet, which won't be as strong, by the way. I don't expect very many outages, nothing like what we're getting across the southern half of the state in northern Maine. And this is going to be interesting this afternoon. The center of the storm is going to go right over the state. And kind of like a hurricane, the eye of a hurricane is nice and calm in there. Same sort of thing's going to happen. It's going to be eerily quiet this afternoon with not much wind. And then the breeze picks up again on the back side of the storm, just like a hurricane, just not as strong, not enough to produce additional power outages. There's the storm swirling up. We've got high pressure working in right behind it. Boy, the rain has been intense. Some of the rainfall amounts have been up around two inches, presenting problems alone there too. I mean, not only do you have wind to contend with, but you have heavy rain, you know, having a tough time getting in drains. There are sections of the road that you won't be able to see pavement on because the leaves are covering it. There's like a half an inch of wet leaves on the road. So take it super slow out there this morning. And then again, the rain shuts off like the wind will, and it'll be strangely quiet there too with very little rain expected after like 9 a.m. Just some scattered showers this afternoon as the center of the low goes overhead and there's a little upper level energy to induce a couple more showers. We'll start clearing out tonight. Not completely out of the woods tomorrow. Still a little gusty on the back side of the storm, but then high pressure works in for the weekend. It actually looks really beautiful for both Saturday and Sunday with sunshine and highs near 60. Perfect weather, exactly what we need because we're going to have a lot of cleanup to do. A lot. Storm warnings on the water. Mariners and fishermen just can't catch a break. Back to back weeks with just awful conditions. These waves causing a lot of problems and damage. Any gear out there is going to be smashed up or end up on a beach somewhere. There's the seven day forecast wind and rain this morning, tapering this afternoon. Little sun tomorrow, but a lot of sun over the weekend. I am a little concerned middle of next week, just throwing it out there. We're on this pattern where we get one big storm a week 
and next week that pattern holds, I think. We could have more big rain and big wind on Wednesday of next week. So All right, well, we'll get through that this mind. one first. Yeah. File that so, one back yeah. there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just under 150,000 people now wow. in, in the state as that number continues wow. to grow without power. So. Yeah, and a lot of schools and cancellations you can yeah. see in the bottom of your screen. And make sure to check on our website. We keep updating the numbers as we get them. Uh, we do have a lot of team coverage today and people outside in the storm. And that includes Mike Slifer, our hmm. meteorologist. Been getting knocked around, huh? Yeah, knocked around in South Portland. Hey, Mike, welcome Bug to the team, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Head out to gonna, Bug Life. We're going to stick you on top of a lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got to say that uh, things have actually improved quite a bit here in South Portland, which is great news. So I think that moving forward, what we're going to start to see now is just how much damage we really had from some of this wind and rain that rolled through. Just locally right here, I have noticed how much debris is on the ground as it started to get lighter out. And you can definitely tell that it's not quite as windy since I can stand safely on the dock. So definitely starting to make those improvements. Todd talked a bit about that. We will continue to improve as we get later into the day, but at this point, you still need to take it slow on the roads. It's not completely light out yet. We're gonna send it back into the studio. We've got more coverage later this morning. All right, thank you so much for that report, Mike Slifer in South Portland. Definitely, uh, definitely calmed down a little bit, but still pretty bad out there. And he's been out there all morning, as has Zach Blanchard. Zach Blanchard is joining us now live with conditions where he is in Stormy. Hey, Zach. Good morning, Lee and Jess. We're actually here in Falmouth now where we have found yet another road closure. This is Allen Avenue. You can see a downed tree branch here. Talking to police, there are actually several trees down in this area. So if you're in the area of Allen Avenue, you definitely want to leave some extra time for your morning commute. Think of a different way. Avoid this area altogether. We have also been hearing of other reports as we've been traveling around the state with debris just everywhere. You can see a look at Stormy, just that rain whipping around. You have leaves all across the roadway, as well as things like trash cans and those political signs. So as you're heading now, be aware of all of those things. We're hearing of several road closures across Route 1, pretty much all the way from Scarborough area all the way up uh, that have kind of been intermittent here and there. Um, but the other big thing is the leaves like this piling up on the roadways. They're going to make it slick as you're heading out this morning. Uh, so always stay up to date on our website and mobile app. But for now, Lee and Jess, I'll send it back to you. All right, Zach Manchin, stay safe out there. Thank you very much. So lots of storm information has been coming from a lot of you on social media this morning. Yeah, our own Chelsea Bard is joining us now from the digital desk with some of that. Good morning, Chelsea. Good morning, Jess and Lee. We're not alone in getting this storm with much of New England getting affected as well. Here's a look from our partners at NBC Boston at some of the damages there. Schools in business, schools and businesses in Mass and New Hampshire are having a lot of closing as, closings as well. Here's a look closer to home. This photo is from the North Berwick Police Department showing some trees down on power lines on Beach Ridge Road. The latest count for, um, oh. Uh, and as we reported previously, in the show, CMP is wicked busy this morning getting inundated with people reporting outages causing some glitches with the site. When Angela Hatch said she checked when her power was expected to come back on, the site estimated she won't have it until January 19th, 2068, making her 94 years old. I hope she likes candles, I guess. For the latest weather alerts and delays, clo delays and closings, make sure to download our mobile app. Yeah, 2068 is a long time to wait to get your long time. Right, a little bit. Just Chelsea, a little bit. thank you very much you. for that. All right, coming up next, we got the five things you need to know as you head out your door on this windy, rainy morning. Good morning. Coming up on today, the crisis in Syria leads to chaos at the White House. Where do things go from here after that extraordinary confrontation between the presidents and the leaders of both parties? We'll have the very latest. Also ahead, are psychedelic drugs the cure for depression? Our first-hand look at a revolutionary treatment that's showing a lot of promise. Then, are you bugged by the new iPhone software update, the big problems being reported, and some potential solutions? Plus, a big deal for parents with kids starting to think about college. We will reveal Princeton Review's best colleges in the country. And we see you in just a bit right here on Today.
And here's a look at five things you need to know as you head out the door, starting live here in Falmouth, where as this wind and rain just continues to pummel the state, it's going to make a mess of your morning commute. Allen Ave here is closed right now in Falmouth, people having to take detours. And this is really the scene we have seen all across the state with down trees, down lines, across roadways. As you're heading out there this morning, definitely keep that in mind and watch out for that debris, as well as some slick spots with leaves and water where you might hydroplane. Conditions are still continuing to increase in this part of the state. I'm live in Hamden this morning at Amerimains Depot here. Crews are responding to more than 21,000 outages in this part of the state. If we look at Central Maine Power further south, they have 128,000 outages. So clearly this storm is bringing a lot of work for utility companies hoping to restore power as quickly as they can. It's a very busy day for them and conditions are still very wet. Things are still going on strong in the greater Bangor area and we will be following them along all morning. Here in the mid coast, we've been taking a beating from this storm. Uh, lots of uh, power lines down, tr branches down, some roads blocked like in other places. Power out, as we said, including here running on generator. Just went out a few minutes ago. It seems to be letting up a little bit, so let's hope so. And then everybody can go out and start cleaning up the damage, of which there may be a lot. Wind and rain continue here in South Portland, but we are starting to make some improvements. Now, at this point, we talk about all of the debris that we can see since it's starting to get light out. Yep. It's All right. And uh, yeah, it's nasty outside. We've got wind, we've got rain, but it is going to get better not too long from now. In southern Maine, like another hour, and the wind shuts down, the rain shuts down. And then in eastern, central, and northern Maine, it'll be a few hours from now. But after lunchtime and this afternoon, much better. We'll start cleaning up. We'll be evaluating. Hopefully, we get power restored back in a timely manner. There are a lot of outages, and clearly there on the seven-day, we'll have some, some good weather, cooperating weather. You know, for the weekend looks nice. Saturday and Sunday, sunny near 60. And guys, we know a lot of you have lost your power and you're consuming us right now on your phone, whether it's through our Facebook app or our website. We're going to continue to provide information on those platforms, YouTube TV is on YouTube as well. Um, so make sure you yeah. use that. If you don't have power, can't watch on TV, you can get your information there. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah, and more than 150,000 now. That's yeah, the latest bad. update on power. So stick with us Pulse on TV if you can. Yeah. 86% would rather have wind and rain than ice and snow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me too. One's sure. coming today, one's coming later. Yeah, we'll no, see in a couple months. Bring on the sound. We'll, we'll get them both before it's all over. <laughs> Guys, stay safe out stay there. Stay safe. tuned to our platforms. We'll keep you updated with all the latest.